All right, so I'm gonna show you what to do if your Creality CR10 or CR10S, um, this knob isn't working, or sometimes I guess it could be your screen might be dead or the button or something might be dead, um, but let me show you what happened with this, um, this one. So I was having issues with this. Uh, the knob stopped working randomly out of nowhere. It was working completely fine. Um, and I'm going to show you somehow one of the cables came loose. I'm wondering if maybe during shipping it was slow, it was already slightly loose. And then I guess just over time, um, I don't know how, but it somehow popped itself out. Anyways, we're going to be using this. I believe this is like a hex key or something or Allen wrench or something. Size 2. And then we're also going to need a size 2.5. All right. There you go. I believe this is like 2.5. I'm guessing it's by millimeters, so this is probably two and a half millimeters and this is two millimeters. So to remove the bottom cover, we're gonna be using the two millimeter one, okay? So of course you wanna, well, you don't really need to disconnect all the cables and everything, but you do need to at least disconnect the power so you don't electrocute yourself. All right, we're gonna remove the five screws on the bottom here, okay? There's only five, all right. And this just holds the bottom metal plate in place, all right, so that we have access to the insides. Um, there are four 2.5 uh, millimeter screws on the side of it, all right, and those are um, to hold the power supply in place. So I'll show you in a bit. I'm kind of considering replacing the fan. I haven't had any issues with it other than it being noisy, but... Um, yeah, let's go ahead and remove this bottom cover. So this actually is somewhat like fit in place with the, the lip. These edges are raised. So when you put it back, you actually have to pull that outwards. All right, make sure this goes all on top. Okay, so you have to kind of pull the edges outwards a little bit and then you can pop it in place, okay, like that. You can see the edges kind of stick up all around, okay. So, yeah, it's kind of designed like that. So you can actually, it's easier if you put this side in first. So you slide this, it'll hit here, and then you can see you have this edge here with the screw mount there. Well, whatever works easier for you. Um, or you can just kind of like slide it like this, I guess. Will that work easier? I don't know. Whatever works for you, all right? Um, but it worked the way I did it originally was I had it like this, and then I kind of had to pull this out a little. Okay, so just like that. All right, so that's how you would put it back. Anyways, let's take this out. We're gonna switch over to the um, two and a half or 2.5, and we're gonna rotate it. Here you see on the side here, we're gonna remove these four screws. These four screws hold the power supply here in place. All right, I believe this box, all it is is the power supply, so if you're, thing isn't turning on, if it's not getting any power, you might want to check that. You might need to replace the power supply, All right? The power supply does have a lot of connections on it, so it probably will be somewhat of a pain to replace. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and remove all four screws. Okay, once you remove all four screws, we're gonna flip this upside down again. All right, and then to get this thing out, this thing is in the way. Um, so what you're gonna do, I'm gonna go from here and lift this up, and we gotta pull this aside so that it opens wide enough to pull the power supply up. All right, there's a bunch of wires connected back here. We don't need to do anything with that. Um, just make sure to pull this to the side and then lift that up. All right, you can see there's dust on it from when it was running, pulling air in. Okay, and here you can see all these cables connected on the back here. All right, you can see there's a whole bunch of cables. I don't want to move it around too much because I don't want to accidentally damage something by rotating it all over the place. But you can see it has the connections to um, the power switch. So this red wire going to the power switch. I believe you can kind of just, yeah, you can just wiggle and pull these off. All right, um, it is a little difficult, so I don't want to pull them out and then end up having issues later, so I'm gonna leave them there. Um, you can see these yellow and black wires. Um, these are going to the power connector here. This red wire, so one red wire is going to the power supply here. Then the black and yellow wires are going to the 
um, power cable. So the yellow is going to the ground. The black, I guess, is going to um, the... I don't know. That's weird. Why is there only two? Am I looking at this right? This is weird. How does the third one not even have a thing connected to it? Oh, I see. Um, they put these metal tabs here to make it go to where it needs to go. Okay, so I think that's because there's a fuse inside of this thing here. So I don't know how you would get that fuse out. I don't know if you can see in there. There's a little um, slot thingy that goes in. So there's a way to get the fuse in and out of here. I think this whole piece probably like slides out. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to... I don't know. I don't know how you would... Oh, I guess you can... Oh, that's like tough. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... <laughs> it's going to be tough to get that out. But anyways, then the red wires all the way at the bottom uh, connecting to the power switch. So when you flip the switch, it just connects this red wire from here to this. All right, then you got another black wire here going down. Where is that going? It's going to the the main board over there. There's a lot of wires. Then you got this black wire going to the green one here. Um, what is this green board? Okay, I don't know. Um, I don't know what all the insides of this thing are. You got another red wire going to this green board as well. And then this other red wire is going down here somewhere. I don't know if you want to look inside there yourself. Um, but you can see there's this separate board here. I don't know what that thing does. If you know, then you can let us know in the comment section below. But there's that thing down there. Okay. Um, and there's no access to that from the outside that I see. Okay. Anyways, enough of that nonsense. We were just going to talk about the screen. Um, anyways, we'll clean off some of this dust here. All right. So we're just going to let this flop over like this. And... Yeah, make sure none of the wires are yanking things out here because that's what's causing the problems in the first place, things getting pulled out. So let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to zoom in more. So here you have the screen, okay? And then the reason why this thing's not working, if you look here, you see that cable? <laughs> All right, I don't know if you just saw that. It's moving. So this cable somehow just came completely loose and unplugged on its own. So make sure... Push in all these cables, push that in, make sure to line this up right, okay, and then just push it back in, make sure it stays in place, alright, it shouldn't just come out on its own. Again, I don't know how that came out on its own, maybe from gravity, because this is pointing down the other way, and then, yeah, I don't know, these, like, you can't really pull this out. So I have a feeling it's partially from shipping, maybe the vibration uh, caused it to come out slightly. And then just as it ran, maybe the fan kind of spinning, vibrating, um, because this fan is kind of bad and like buzzing. I don't know if it's this fan or the one in the power supply, but um, yeah. So just check all these connections. There's the connections to the board down here. Let me actually show you this with my hand. Take it out of the tripod here. So you can see the connections in there. All right. You can see how they connect all the X, Y, and Z and all of those cables internally, they all go through this and then come out the outside over here. Okay, I don't know if this will give you a better view of whatever this other board is that I was not sure what it is. Control in, so that's the control board or something, I don't know. All right, there's another tiny fan up there. So I don't know which one of these fans are the noisy ones. There's three fans. Yeah, apparently there's three fans. Um, and one of them, the motor's kind of bad. It goes like, and then I have to like, if I smack it or wait a while, it'll go better. Maybe smacking it's what caused this to pop out. Anyways, um, here you can see all these other connectors here, the X, Y, Z and stuff. All right. That control the motors. And yeah, there's not really much else in here that I know what to talk about. So I don't know. Hopefully this video will help some of you guys. Um, I know I just went off talking about random stuff, but uh, the main thing you need to know if your screen, that knob isn't working or the screen isn't working, double check these cables here and here, make sure they're all connected and you should be good to go. 
Um, I'm not really going to show it working because if you have the device, you know how it works. But um, yeah, it's definitely working after re uh, reconnecting that cable. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. I forgot to show you guys how to put this thing back together. We're going to flip this thing back over, okay? And then you got to pull this back out to drop this back under. All right. Then we just rotate this on its side again. Okay. Put back the two and a half, 2.5 uh, hex screws. All right. You do have to kind of hold it up in place and find out where these screws are. Okay can be a little tricky okay you want to line up this little switch here obviously there we go and then once you get that lined up you can kind of get them in place um, but anyways what I found helps you can grab this fan thing here and use that to slide it over um, the wires here do kind of like push on it so oops, let me actually tuck these wires back down a little bit so you kind of want to get these wires back in out of the way. Okay, this back down. All right, rotate that back over. For some reason, these screws aren't sticking with the magnet, so it makes it a little bit more difficult, but there we go, lift it up. It helps to, it might help to have another person helping, but I use my finger here to pull you can see I can push like that, get that lined up, okay, and then we can get the screw in. All right, and we're going to loosely fit it first because we want to make sure it, we get it all lined up before we tighten it down. We're going to lift up on the back here as well, okay. You can actually pull up on the, the wing, this part that sticks out here, and use that to help guide it. Okay, so we'll get that in. Again, we're just loosely fitting it. Oops. Oh, excuse me. All right. We've got two more. Let me get this one in. And the last one. All right. Again, line it up. This screw's being weird. Okay. There we go. And then you can go ahead and just tighten all four screws in. And you should be good. I don't know if it's, it's kind of weird because this is a little bit out of alignment, but that's okay. We're not going to really be messing with that switch. And I think that's how it was before. So I guess they just cut this thing wrong. I didn't really pay close attention earlier to notice, but I'm pretty sure if I move it a tiny bit over, it's the screws aren't going to be able to go in. Anyways, there you go. Again, flip this over, and I kind of already showed how to get the bottom cover back on. Make sure this grate lines up with the fan, so it, otherwise it's going to overheat. Okay, get this lined up. And then, we're going to get this, push it in, pull this out, and there we go. Get everything lined into place. Switch back to the 2.0 size, or the 2, sorry, not 2.0. And then we'll just get these screws in. Again, it helps to kind of just loosely fit the screws first before you tighten them down completely. All right. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. I was thinking that it wasn't going to be worth fixing this thing. Um, I was checking like replacing this thing is almost like more than half the cost, at least now. They came out with new models, and the new models are like in the 300 something range, and a replacement of this whole computer box and everything was like 250 or something. So, um, yeah, for something this simple, uh, it's nice. Um, I was thinking maybe I'd have to replace the screen. I read some other people say that it was something else that was the issue, but luckily mine was just that loose cable. Hopefully the same 
thing is the issue you were having. And yeah, um, I thought that was really weird that randomly one day I turned it on and the knob wasn't working. So yeah, hopefully that fixes your 3D printer as well. All right, we're gonna reassemble the rest. I took out all the other pieces as well. Um, we had this, uh, the thing holding the spool as well. But yeah, you should know how to put all of that back together because when you bought it, it was already disassembled like that. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. Bye.